Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. Lesson 26, Solving Rational Equations. Okay, classwork opening exercise says, exercise one, two, solve the following equations for X. Okay, we wanna find out what this is that makes this equation true and give evidence that your solutions are correct. There are multiple ways we can approach this. I will show all, three. Well, I'm gonna show three ways. I'll show three. So the first thing I'm going to do is say, okay, I want a six in all denominators. I already have a six here, so five, six is just simply five, six. To make three a six, I had to multiply by two, so two times one is two. To get uh, six from a two, I have to multiply by three, so I have three x over six plus two over six equals five over six. So that's going to come out to be, I'm gonna subtract two six from both sides, so I get three X over six equals, and if I subtract two six over here, I already did it here, so it's gone. Five minus two is three six or a half, okay? So now that I have three times something over six equals three over six, well, that something obviously has to be one. Three times one is three, six is already equal to six, or I could have cross multiplied and said 18 X equals 18. Three X times six is here. Six times three is 18. Divide both sides by 18 and I get X equals one. The other way we could do it is just multiply everything by six. So watch what happens. If I just take, why is this doing this? If I take six times x over 2 plus 1 over 3 equals 5 over 6. And I distribute this 6 outside, multiply the whole thing by 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. That will leave me with 3x. I apologize for this. I do not know why my computer is doing that. 6 divided by 3 is 2. 2 times 1 is 2. And then the 6 divided by 6 cancels, and I get a nice linear equation. Subtract 2 from both sides, and I get 3x equals 3. Divide both sides by 3, and I get x equals 1. Okay. And I think I'm just going to stop there with how to do these. There is other ways, but you get the idea. All right, so let's move on. This is a unique situation where the denominators are all already nine. So back in, I think either sixth or seventh grade, we should have re realized that whenever the numerators in an equation or the denominators are the same, the numerators are all we need to focus on. But the reason that is, is if I take this whole thing and multiply it by nine, the nines cancel here, leaving me with two X. The nines cancel here, nine divided by nine is one, leaving me with five. The nine divided by nine cancels here, leaving me with eight. Okay, subtract five from both sides, I get two X equals three, divide both sides by two and I get three halves. Okay, so that'd be the, and notice what happened here after we multiplied everything by nine, we got the numerator all by itself. So whenever the denominators are equal, what is my computer doing? Then it just cancels, okay? Let me just try something here. Okay, now it's said in the equation, in the directions to give evidence that your solutions are correct. So in other words, check. Okay, so if I put a one up here, uh, one half plus one third has to equal five, six. I'm not gonna check that one, but if I check this one, if I take two times three halves, that's frustrating, over nine plus five over nine has to equal eight over nine. These twos cancel. I don't know why that's doing that. Okay, these twos cancel leaving me with three ninths plus five ninths 
equals eight ninths. And three plus five is eight. So eight ninths equals eight ninths. Okay, the last one. Um, my denominator is 12. So there's two ways we can do these. We can multiply everything through, and I think that's the easiest. Or we can figure out, well, if I multiply six times two, I will get 12. So five times two is 10. So this would equal 10 twelfths. So I'm gonna do it that way. So X plus three over 12 equals 10 over 12. Because what I did was multiply by two over two. Five times two is 10, six times two is 12. My denominators are equal, so I can disregard them. So X plus three equals 10. Subtract three from both sides and I get X equal to seven. Okay, exercise three through seven on page two. Exercise means try it yourself. Pause the video, see if you can do this. This is really a review of algebra one and pre-algebra. So in this problem, I'm just going to simply cross multiply. Eight times X is eight X. And three times X minus two, if I distribute is three X minus six. So there's my equation. And then I just solve, subtract three X over to the other side will give me five X equals negative six, divide both sides by five and X is negative six fifths. Okay, pretty straightforward. Okay, number four says solve the following equation for A. So we have A plus two, A minus two, and A squared minus four. All right, so here's what's going on here. A squared minus four is a difference of perfect squares. And A plus two times A minus two is equal to A squared minus four. So I'm just going to multiply by the common denominator. And another way I could do this is just simply take this a squared minus four and multiply everything by it. So watch what happens when I do that. Um, I get a plus two, one over a minus two equals four a squared. That looks like a nine. Minus four. Okay, so if I take a squared minus four divided by a plus two, I'm going to get a minus two. So a squared minus four divided by a plus two is a minus two and a minus two times one is a minus two. And then if I take a squared minus four divided by a minus two, I get a plus two times one is a plus two. And then these cancel and I get four. Okay, so actually this is pretty easy if you know that these two divide this and become the opposite middle sign. So now I combine like terms, a plus a is two a, negative two plus two cancels, I get two a equals four, divide both sides by two and I get a equals two. Okay, but there's a problem with that. So the second I saw that A equals two, I look here and that would make A minus two, zero. Two minus two is zero. I cannot have a zero in a denominator. So the answer to this problem is no solution, the empty set, however you say it, or the words no solution, okay? Number five, solve the following equation. Remember to check the for extraneous solutions. Extraneous solutions means the denominator cannot be zero. Well, the only extraneous solution here would be three times what would give me zero? Well, that's zero. And if this is zero, so X cannot equal zero. That are, those are my, that is my extraneous solution in this problem. It's the only one, okay? So I have a three X, I have a four, and I have an X. What is the least common multiple of all of those? So here's how I would do this off to the side. 3x equals 3 times x. 4 is simply 4, and x is simply x. I want the same thing in all of them. So I would need a 4 here. So now I have a 3, an x, and a 4. Here I just have a 4, so I need a 3 and an x. Here I just have an x, 
So I need a three and a four. Okay, so my least common multiple is going to be 12, the, the, the product of any one of these three, which is 12x. Okay, so if I take the first term, 4 over 3x, that's this one here, 3x, what did I have to multiply it by to get 12x? 4 over 4. So there's my first term. And then the, the middle term plus, I have a 5 over 4, I need... 3x. So I'm going to multiply this by 3x over 3x. Okay. And then finally, oops, not plus, equals. Um, equals 3 over x. So I need to multiply this. I have an x. I need 12. So that's 3 times 4 or 12 over 12. Okay. So those are my three pieces that I need to do. And so this is going to get me 4 times 4, which is 16 over 12x, plus 5 times 3x is 15x over 12x, equals 12 times 3, which is 36 over 12x. So this is going to simplify down to 8. So that's going to equal something over 12x, 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 common denominator. So 16 plus 5x, actually, let me not do it this way. Oh, yeah, I could. Let me just leave that. So it's going to be 12x, 16 plus 15x. So it'd be 15x plus 16 equals 36. So remember in the prior problem that when we had comp same denominators, you can just get rid of them. So we have 15x plus 16 equals 36. Subtract 16 over to the other side, we get 15x equals 20. Divide both sides by 15 and we get 20 over 15. And that reduces to 4 thirds. And then check for extraneous solutions. The only extraneous solution would be x equals 0. So with that problem, that is the solution and we're OK. OK, page 3 brings us to exercise 6. So see if you can solve this, pause the video, see if you can do it and come back. So here we go. Uh, solve the following equation. Remember to check for extraneous solutions. So I just look at the denominator in each. B plus three cannot equal zero. So therefore B cannot equal negative three. B minus three cannot equal zero. Therefore B cannot equal positive three. And B squared minus nine is a perfect square, difference of perfect squares, and those perfect squares are right here. So this times this equals that. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna do this one a little bit differently. I'm going to show my work as this. I'm gonna put B plus three here, and then I'm going to say plus, I'm gonna leave a space. I'm gonna put five B minus three here, and I'm going to say equals. 10b minus 2 over b squared minus 9. Okay, so now I just want to figure out what am I going to multiply here and here to get b squared minus 9 in the denominator so that I have common denominators throughout. So this is what it's going to look like. Okay, so in order to get b squared minus 9 from b plus 3, I need to multiply by b minus 3 over itself. To get b squared minus 9, I need to multiply by b plus 3. So I divide it by itself. Whoops. b plus 3. Okay, so then I just distribute. So let me put parentheses around the numerator here, just so I remember to distribute. 7 times b is 7b. 7 times a negative 3 is negative 21. 5 times b is 5b. 5 times 3 is 15. Okay, and then I combine like terms. 7b plus 5b is 12b. Negative 21 plus 15 is negative 6 over b squared minus 9 equals 10b minus 2 over b squared minus 9. 
So as I said before, if the denominators are equal, we can ignore them if there's an equal sign in between and just set the numerators equal to each other and we will finish this up here. So if 12b minus six equals 10b minus two and I subtract 10b over here and here, 12b minus 10b is 2b. And if I add six over to the other side, negative two plus six is four. So I just did two steps at once there, divide both sides by two and I get B equals two. We've done these long enough or you shouldn't have to show every single step. There it is, B equals two. It is not one of the extraneous solutions. We are okay. All right, number seven. Okay, so X times X is X squared. Negative six minus two is a negative eight. Negative times negative is positive. Six times two is 12. So this times this gives us this. So I'm just going to go like this. I'm going to take X minus two over itself times one over X minus six. Okay. Plus then I take and I need X minus six over, oh, let me use blue again. I want X minus six over itself multiplied by what I have, which is X over X minus two. And those have to equal four over X squared minus eight X plus 12. Okay, so we're almost done. X minus two times X minus six is X squared minus eight X plus 12. So I'm gonna write it down here. Okay, so all my denominators are the same and now I just distribute. One times X minus two is X minus two and x times x is x squared, x times negative six is negative six x. So combine these and I get no x squared over here plus an x squared will give me x squared. x plus a negative six x is minus five x. Negative two plus no constant over here is negative two. So I have x squared minus five x minus two over x squared minus eight x plus 12 equals four over X squared minus eight X plus 12. So remember the denominators are the same. We cancel them and we just focus on the numerator and solve. So how do we solve a quadratic? It's gotta be equal to zero. Don't add two over to the other side and get six and try to solve this. We could factor out an X and so on, but I'm just gonna move it over to the other side and get X squared minus five X subtracting four over the other side will give me minus six equals zero. When I factor this, I get X times X is X squared factors of six that add up to five. If it's negative, the signs have to be opposite. I need a positive. I need a negative. The middle term is negative. So the bigger number is going to be over here and six times one. So it's going to be minus six plus one will give me negative five and one times negative six is negative six. So therefore X has to equal negative one or X has to equal six. But if I go up to my extraneous solutions, when it's all factored here, these are the values you need to look at to determine uh, what cannot be. So X cannot equal two, that would make this zero and X cannot equal six because that would make this zero so this is an extraneous solution. So the only answer is X equals negative one. Okay, page four brings us to the end of lesson 26. Review the lesson summary and go to your problem set.